Hey, hey, hey. Time for another out of this world story from our space. Found out that my girlfriend was hiding that she is engaged to someone else. So I did this. I work at a shipping warehouse as a team lead. I do everything the supervisor can't do or can't get to. And I just go to work to work every day. Never anything else. I always keep to myself. I'm 20 and I hate drama. I'm not at work to make friends. So there was this new girl who got hired as an employee. And long story short, she had a crush on me. And told my supervisor. And then eventually put a note on my desk with her Snapchat. So I added her because I thought she was a good looking girl. She would respond to my texts within 3 seconds every time for weeks straight. And we were hanging out and having an active sexual relationship. She's 22. And then there was this one day where I woke up and she had me unadded on Snapchat. And it showed me pending when I tried to Snapchat her. And so I called her and she didn't answer. And then she eventually did. And gave me some excuse that her phone was dead and she was asleep or something like that. So I said, okay, give it the benefit of the doubt and moved along. I'd always think back to how she gave me her Snapchat at first. She approached me, so I have no reason to worry. After this, about three weeks later of normal good relationship hanging out and all that good stuff, we're getting in trouble at work because we spend too much time together and talking. A spot eventually opened up and I made sure she got it because it was a good promotion and she was my girlfriend. At least that's what I thought. Now she tells me she's going to the beach for three days with her family. This is now three months into the relationship. So the day she leaves, she removed me on Snapchat again, and that time I said, okay, I'm done, like we need to either talk in person, or I'm done right here because something is obviously wrong. So later that night, she added me back and gave me some BS again, and I was just like, yeah, okay, I'm just glad you answered and you're alive, you know, but I know you're up to something and we need to talk. Eventually that night, she unadded me again, and I was like, okay, might as well keep me unadded because I'm done after that for the third time. Then I decided to go on Facebook and look one last time because she had previously told me she didn't use social media. But after only two minutes of looking, I found her profile and the bio said something along the lines of in relationships once 2018 with somebody and engaged. So that's when I really found out the truth. And honestly, I wasn't even upset at all. I was more relieved I didn't have to worry about it anymore and that it wasn't going to be. So I messaged her boyfriend screenshots and exposed her and said, yo, I don't want her, but I think you should know about this and blocked him. And since then, she constantly is trying to talk to me at work saying how she regrets it and she wishes she just picked me instead and all that. Literally insane. And no, I'd never go back to her now that I know who she really is. Let's look at some community reaction before I move on. Creepy usernames says, at least you aren't the poor bastard engaged to her. Alternative date 919 says, be careful to work. You go to HR first and let them know how long you've had a relationship with her. Let them know that you just broke up and you're concerned that there may be a retaliation as you let her fiancé know that she's been cheating on him. If she goes in there first spinning the story that, as her supervisor, you offer her a better job for sexual relationship, then you'll be out in your butt in two shakes. C-Y-A. Last comment before I move on from Warren Blue Carpet. So you never actually defined a relationship? Don't assume crap. People are F these days. I don't know what has happened to the world. I'm only 43, but I remember a not too distant past where you didn't need to have any talk. If you saw someone regularly and screwed, it was kind of understood that you were an item. Being exclusive was the default, and seeing other people was something you specifically agreed upon. These days, it's the other way around. I found out that besides me, she has a boyfriend and two guys who are friends with benefits. So, you never asked her to be exclusive, did you? I'm so glad I'm not single. If I ever become single, I'll just stay single. I simply don't understand the rules concerning dating anymore. Or rather, I do. There are no rules. People do what they want without any concern for others, and they defend their crappy behavior with, but we never agreed to be exclusive. Moving on to the next story. Dad cheated on mom and now my boyfriend cheated on me. How to cope with it all and deal with my trust issues. My entire childhood, my father was unfaithful to my mother. He had cheated when I was a baby and had affairs when I was in elementary school up until I was a teen. He abused my mom physically sometimes too. I watched him strangle her right in front of me with rage and anger when I was only six. And I mean like two feet away from me. So going up, watching them fight, scream, yell, and emotionally, as well as physically be abusive towards one another, it does some things to a child, as you can assume. My mom would lay in bed hours on end just crying her eyes out in agony. I never understood why she didn't leave him. Until. Well, my childhood surprisingly never gave me any huge issues. I had slight trust issues, but that was it. My father stopped cheating when I was 15. So for a few years, my family felt somewhat normal and peaceful, and I was moved on from it all and pretty much forgot about it. Then I got a boyfriend at 17. I wasn't looking for a relationship at first, but I truly really just fell for him. He was so sweet, charming, and I loved the way he looked in my eyes. I thought we would be together forever. 
I know it sounds cheesy, but I told him, and we agreed we would date for the long term, or possibly marriage, as I don't date just for fun, personally. I saw a future with him. I broke down every wall I had with him. One day I sat down and told him about my childhood and how unfaithful my father was. I told him a cheater won't say they're a cheater. You'll just do it, and have a whole side you don't even know about. My boyfriend was 21 at the time, by the way. I was very mature for my age, and I say that because although he was older, I felt like I was more mature than him on so many levels. A few months into the relationship, I found out he had been cheating on me for 90% of the relationship. I had received tons of screenshots and within a few minutes my whole entire life flashed before my eyes. My biggest fear and my biggest nightmare was being cheated on by the man I loved. I was truly in love with him at the time, and it absolutely tore me apart. But that isn't even the worst part. I forgave him and gave him a second chance. I honestly don't know what was wrong with me. I hate myself for that. It's my biggest regret. He cried in front of me, all his eyes out was regret. So I had pity for him, and thought he honestly would change. But after he cheated, it was never the same. He stopped trying after like a month of changing. He didn't care if he would play mind games with me, or make me feel bad for him. He always played the victim. A few months goes by, and he meets a girl he supposedly says is just like me, and says she is just a friend. I told him I'm not comfortable with him being around her since he knew way too many details about her. He said she was blocked and irrelevant. Until a few weeks later, he's on vacation with a few friends, and who is he with? Her. She and him were hanging out privately for days, and he lied to me about it. He disappeared and was being so vague on where he was, and what he was doing, or who he was with. I knew he was lying to me because I sensed it. So that day, I broke up with them for good, and I have never looked back. I dodged a bullet even if it was a little late, and I'm glad I dodged it. But even though I left him, it's been about nine months since. I still have nights where I'm filled with regret. Like, why did I give him a second chance? I was so stupid. I just hate that it was my biggest fear and it came true. He was my first love and my only ever boyfriend. I'm 18 now and have somewhat moved on, but I feel like I'm not fully over it because it correlates with such a deep childhood drama. It brought back all my emotional distress. I'm not a sensitive person. Some people think I may be a bit cold, but I'm only sensitive when it comes to one, love, and two, family. Love and family are the only things that can make me cry, and it brought out both of those traumatic events. I was shattered by my boyfriend and my father. I still think about it a few times every single day, and I'm so tired of it. I still check on his social media. Oh, and by the way, he is now dating the girl he told me not to worry about. So ladies, just know you are never assuming. Men are just liars sometimes. I just need advice on moving on fully, and how to stop caring about it, or stop checking in on his social media. I hate thinking of him. I want to try and fade him into just a distant memory. I need to heal the trauma, but I don't know where to start. I know this is way long, but if anyone read it, I would love your advice. Thank you. Ask the community for advice and you will get it. Mao Bao has the first comment. Maybe pick up a new hobby and go on a first few dates with other people. Nothing sexual, just dinner or something. These new things might help your mind break out of a reminiscent dot cycle. About cheating, many people will cheat given the chance. Finding a good partner takes a lot of time. If there are any red flags, just move on. You don't owe anyone anything. Your time is precious and cannot be replaced. Outgrow Infidelity says, You are not alone. It is incredibly common for kids who grew up with cheating parents to either cheat themselves or end up dating cheaters. I also grew up with a cheating parent, and just last week, started a sub called Arsh Last Kids of Cheating Parents, because I was so tired of all of the talk about infidelity being about the couple when the kids are so affected by it. I certainly don't have all of the answers for you, but maybe on the sub, we can figure it out. You certainly don't deserve to be with anyone who cheats on you or abuses you in any way. I know that much. On to the next story. My wife's female co-worker is trying to seduce her to have sex. My wife has a friend, F. She works with who I believe is trying to get my wife to have sex with her. This work friend calls my wife several times a day and they speak for hours. She's told my wife that she hasn't had sex with a man in years. Instead of saying she hadn't had sex with anyone, she specified that she hadn't had sex with a man. My wife has told me that she finds her cute and her friend is always telling my wife how pretty she is. My wife came home for work tonight and told me that her friend had invited her over to her house to drink heavily and then spend the night. I thought it odd that this girl, who has been divorced for many years, would ask a married woman she finds pretty to spend the night with her. I told my wife that I believe that there is only one reason someone invites you over to get you drunk and spend the night. My wife claims her friend is just lonely and doesn't want her to drink and drive. I asked my wife what she would do if I was right and her friend tried to hook up with her. She said, I'm not sure. I followed that question up with, what will the sleeping arrangement be? She claimed she didn't know, but it would only be the two of them. So what do you think? Am I right believing that my wife's friend is trying to seduce her, or is she just lonely? Based on my wife's response, 
they either already have or my wife knows exactly why she's being invited and she's not sure she wants to do it. Thoughts? Ask for thoughts, you got them. Lil River 917 says, Yes, her co-worker is trying to seduce her, and yes, your wife is enjoying the attention. I'm bisexual and married to a man, so I know not to do anything that makes my husband feel excluded. I always want my husband to feel like he's part of what's going on, even if it's something harmless, but it doesn't seem like your wife is trying to include you, so that's something you need to discuss with her. Latino 4 says, Tell her to invite the friend to your place instead, and you can go to the other room to read a book. Siren says, Staying at someone else's regardless of gender and drinking just the two does not mean anything. However, your wife's response of, I'm not sure, is an issue. It should always be a, no. I've had a girl come on to me when I was drunk and I said, no, I have a boyfriend who I love. If anything happened, she should say no and either ring you to pick her up or sleep in a separate room. Last comment comes from JNH Daughter. Honestly, I would do what the one commenter said and tell the wife to invite her there. Or she can go to drink, but you can drop her off and pick her up when she's done. That way, no sleepover, and they get to spend time. So my thoughts are, if you are feeling this way, then most likely your feelings are valid. You should have a serious talk with her about her sexuality and why she feels okay to want to do this. If it's something she feels she wants to explore and you're not okay with it, then maybe it's time to talk divorce and you both going on your separate ways. Tell her it's fine if she wants to do it, but that she can't have her cake and eat it too. Don't be afraid to divorce her. Maybe she didn't realize she felt that way and now she wants to explore that side of herself. If you love her and this is something she wants to pursue, tell her instead of cheating, she can do it without worries of being divorced. I can't stand selfish people who want to keep someone but yet cheat. Like, talk to your person, explain to them that you may be same-sex oriented. She may have been ashamed to pursue it, or maybe she didn't know. Good luck to you both, and I hope it works out for you both.